Well, hello. We got started a little bit late, had some technical difficulties, but uh, thank you for joining us for this uh, virtual book signing. And um, I hope we're on live. Um, hopefully we'll see some different ones pop up here in just a moment. But I do want to invite you to interact with me uh, this evening for this book signing. And so um, I'll be signing uh, a number of books and just telling you uh, about uh, the book. And so uh, just go ahead and comment when you're on and let me know where you're watching from. I see uh, Emily Ingwall, thank you for joining us. And uh, I'd love to know where you're uh, getting, being a part of this to, this evening. So if you'll just kind of let us know where you're coming from, where you are. Uh, so, but again, thanks for joining us. And this is uh, uh, the first of the first. I want to thank uh, Dusty Saddle Publishing for doing this. And we're sort of on a, a learning curve. We're a few minutes late getting started. Uh, but again, thank you for joining. And uh, I do want to remind you that uh, you can go to www. Uh, CaseyNashAuthor.com, and you can order this book if you would like for me to sign it online tonight. Or uh, my publisher said that he would actually keep the store open uh, till several hours later. So if you want a copy of the book, you can just let us know, and we will certainly uh, do that. I do want to share with you this is the the book that we're talking about. And it is uh, one of the books in the Jubal Stone series. It's called Thou Shall Not Steal. And uh, this is, um, I have six books currently in this series. And I have a book seven coming out very soon and book eight right behind that. Somebody asked me recently, do I write in my sleep? And the answer to that is sometimes. I'm constantly, constantly thinking uh, of, of different ideas. And so, Emily, thank you for uh, letting us know you're in the Chicago suburbs. That's pretty cool. That's a few miles away from where I am. I'm in Babinette, Alabama, South Alabama. So thank you, Emily, uh, for joining us. Um, again, uh, there's uh, six books currently in this series, and I want to encourage you uh, to get those books if you haven't. If you have, I'd love to hear from you even this evening. If you've read any album and you want to post something, let other viewers know about the book, um, uh, only if you enjoyed it. <laughs> you know, I like to, uh, to tell people I'm, I'm a writer, but I'm also a pastor. And I tell people, be careful, uh, because what you say may either be used in a book or a sermon or both. And I really do mean that, you know, kind of like... Um, I'm always looking for ideas. And so uh, we've got Katrina joining us from Pennsylvania. Uh, we've got Nick joining us from Great Britain. That's pretty cool. I see Nathan uh, Burnett joining us from South Carolina. That's one of my sons, and I'm so glad that he's a part of this as well. All right. And so, um, again, I'll be signing some books, and I'm going to do that. Uh, even as we are talking, I'm moving around a little bit. We've had to change a, a little bit of what we were doing, but that's okay because we are very versatile and ready for anything. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start signing uh, some of these books. And again, this is the Thou Shall Not Steal book, and uh, I enjoyed writing this. I want to tell you some about it shortly. We've got uh, Samantha joining us from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Uh, thank you, Samantha, for joining us. It's good to, good to have you on. And so, um, you know, I've, uh, I'm just amazed uh, as I've been writing these Westerns. I started back in 2014. I've written for some Christian magazines, but I'd never written a novel until I started writing uh, Westerns. And it's been really a, a, a neat trip. And uh, I'm still just blown away that people uh, like to read what I'm writing, it's very humbling, it really is, and I'm, I'm excited about it, and uh, you know, um, really writing now has become an obsession, not just uh, something as a hobby, but it's an obsession for me, and uh, all I need often is just an idea, and I'm often running, and I know that's like 
all authors. And uh, again, if, if you're watching and uh, joining us this evening and you're an author, let me know that. Uh, I would appreciate that. We've got Wayne Boyd watching. Wayne is a very dear friend of mine. Thanks, Wayne, for being a part of this. And so I'm going to sign a couple of books, and then I'm going to talk to you some more about Thou Shall Not Steal, this book that uh, uh, I'm signing tonight, and uh, uh, I think you'll, you'll enjoy it. And so, um, again, if you have comments and you want to post those, if you have questions for me about my writing, about any of my books, uh, please just, just let me know because I tell you, I'm, I'm a talker. I love to talk about my books. And so uh, um, go ahead and post any questions uh, that you may have. And again, if you've read any of the Jubal Stone books in the series, I'd love to hear from you. I always love to hear uh, from those that are reading uh, the books. And so, again, uh, thanks for joining us uh, this evening. Uh, and I have another book that I've written. Um, it's in the Western romance genre. It's called Forbidden Love, and I hope you'll check that out. That is on uh, Amazon as well. We have Leah joining us from British Columbia. Hello, Leah. It's good to to see you on here, another uh, very good friend, and appreciate you being a part of this. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to sign a couple of these books, and uh, then we will we will just continue to talk. I do want to read just a little bit uh, about uh, the book we're talking about. Just on the back, it's just a little summary, and I think it uh, captures uh, the book well. It says, uh, One-eyed Jack Dawson and his thieving brother Lawrence knew a good horse when they saw one, and neither was afraid to take it and sell it. These brothers made a career out of taking things that didn't belong to them, but when they took Marshall Jubalstone's Red Roan, and his wife's done filly, they made a terrible mistake. The Dawsons thought that fetching their stolen horses into Indian territory would discourage anyone from following. Who had risked life and limb for a horse? Soon they would find out. In Jubal, Stone mind, in Jubal Stone's mind, a few things were sacred to him. His faith in God, his wife, his friends, and his horse a horse that had been given to him as a gift from the late Sheriff Monty Peel. And so that just uh, a little summary of this book. And I wanted to read uh, just a little bit more um, in this. <clears throat> just in the beginning, it says, Horse stealing in Texas was a hanging offense if the thief lived long enough to be sentenced. Usually if caught by anyone except a lawman, Swift justice, vigilante justice came as his captors tied his hands, looped a noose around his neck, heaved him on a horse, and slapped its rump. Of course, those who carried out the sentence were often gracious enough to leave a note pinned to the thief's shirt, giving the reason for his sudden demise, horse theft. Some might wonder about the equivalence of an animal's life versus a man's life. Yet to those living on the frontier, a horse was one of the most important possessions they owned, apart from a pistol, rifle, or shotgun. That animal often made the difference between life and death for those who relied on it to plow a field, work their cattle, transport their goods to town for sale, or for just getting from point A to point B. To be left afoot could easily lead to ruin or death. That's why they hanged horse thieves swiftly. That's just a little bit on the, uh, the front end here. Uh, just reading a couple of comments uh, that have been posted um, from my friend Wayne Boyd. He has uh, attended a number of my book signings. He says, it's amazing how God has used your books to build his kingdom. I have witnessed personally how individuals have read, let's see if I can get more of this. Yes, have read the books and have been drawn closer to him, and I appreciate that, Wayne, and uh, I echo that. It's been very humbling. Uh, you know, I call a lot of my 
Western novels, the gospel, and a cowboy rapper. They're not religion in your face, but my books are clean. When I started writing, my commitment to God was, God, I'll, I'll, I'll never use profanity uh, or sexual uh, scenes or anything like that. I always want to glorify God. And so that is my commitment. I say, you know, children could read my books because they're that clean. There is uh, uh, a good bit of violence in them from the, from the West and from the frontier, but uh, they're action-packed, they're clean, and, and that's what, uh, one of the things I enjoy about writing them is you don't have to use profanity. I love what Louis L'Amour uh, said many years ago that sometimes when you read an author and he's, his, his or her books are full of profanity, Sometimes it's a vocabulary problem. They don't have much of a vocabulary. So I really like um, Louis L'Amour. He, he was a very uh, clean writer. So um, again, just going back a little bit about where I started with my writing, because I get asked that a lot. Um, how did you start writing? And again, I mentioned I, I was writing Christian articles. Um, and then I turned to Western novels I wrote my first one, I was about 85% finished before I even told my wife I was writing the book because I thought this may be the dumbest thing I've ever done. And like probably a lot of authors, you know, what we write is kind of dear to us and it's personal, uh, but we want to share it. We want people to love it. And so I, uh, I gave the draft to my wife and she read it and she just bawled and, uh, I actually gave it to her and I um, had to go out of town. And while I was out of town, she called me. She said that was so beautiful and uh, it's a powerful story. And uh, so just a shout out to my wife, Kim. She has been such an inspiration and such an encourager to me. And I appreciate her so much. And uh, she has edited my books over the years and made them much stronger every time she's read them and made corrections, and uh, so I appreciate her so much. My daughter has also done some of my editing, and that's even before it goes to uh, the publisher. So, um, but again, I'm, I'm always writing books now. Uh, as I said, it's an obsession. I just got back from Horse Creek, Wyoming, and it's been uh, kind of my oasis for the last six or seven years. Not only for my ministry, it's been kind of a sabbatical where I get away and uh, just get by myself, and I tell people my heart starts beating again. Um, and and uh, so when I'm out there, uh, there's a lot of fodder for my books. I've got a good friend at Horse Creek, Wyoming. He lets me come out to his very large ranch and just uh, stay as long as I want to, and I, I can't uh, say what that's meant to me. Just got back, so I've got a lot to uh, think about and put into my books and all that kind of stuff. Got a question here from uh, Nathan. It says, do you use any personal anecdotes from your time in ministry from growing up as an inspiration for any plot points? And I would say, uh, you know, everything in my life is a resource for my writing. And that's why I say humorously again, when I'm talking to someone, I meet someone, often I'm thinking, you know, about the different characteristics of that person. Um, how they're different. I just kind of make a note and like, you know, I can use that. Maybe something they say just um, gives me an idea. Um, it was humorous one Christmas, right before Christmas, my wife came on. She was, she's a nurse and she was sharing a story about a lady that just shared that their house burned on Christmas day years ago. And that idea just stuck in my mind. And I started writing a short story, The Christmas Fire. And uh, I, I love the story. It's very, very inspirational. So um, always looking for ideas. I, you know, I keep my notes, my note thing on my phone open so I can uh, write those down. Um, Wayne asked, do you have any uh, book signings planned uh, for the future? And, you know, right now, Wayne, I don't. And uh, But I do need to start those again. I, I really enjoyed them. It's, uh, the last couple of years has been kind of a roller coaster ride in our personal lives. We've lost uh, some family members and we've relocated and all that good stuff. So, but uh, I, I really do love the, the uh, book signings and uh, uh, I'll be calling you Wayne when I have my next one so you can come over 
and help me with that. But uh, I, I love to interact with people. And usually if I can get them to pick up that book and I can start telling them about it, uh, they usually will buy uh, the, 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 the book because uh, uh, they, they hear the story and it uh, hopefully just creates some interest on their part. <clears throat> and so, uh, as I mentioned, I am working on uh, book seven and eight. I'm usually working on two to three books at one time, and I like doing that for a number of reasons, but one is... Um, you know, I can pivot and have some new thoughts on another book. Um, I've also been doing a number of co-writes lately with other talented authors, and that's been really a cool experience. I didn't know how that was going to work. Um, and Emily asked, have you ever based a character off of someone you know? And absolutely. You know, a lot of times <laughs> family members and friends they, they, they say or ask me, am I in your book? And I say, yes. That's all I say, though. You know, I don't want to go too far with it. Um, so here's another question. Uh, would you say your personality is reflected in the characters you write about? Uh, I think the answer to that is yes as well. There's bits and pieces of my life probably in all of these characters, maybe in some of the dark characters as well, but uh, just... Uh, so much of what I write about, I've, I've had an experience that feeds into that, and that is so cool, and I've been so blessed. I give God the glory uh, for all the good things that have happened to me in my life. He, you know, His favor has been on my life, and it is on all believers, but He's been very good to me, and um, uh, I, I grew up in a loving family, and I have such a reservoir of emotions and, and, and memories. Um, lost my mom and dad the last couple of years and I thought about them like every day. But my dad, he was a horseman. He taught me so much about horses. I grew up around horses, trained them, showed them. Uh, my wife says I'm about half horse, um, act that way anyway. But I, I love to be around them. Even now I've got a small farm over in Alabama and I'm building a barn and about to fence my place and have some horses. So, uh, uh, so yes, um, I think, you know, my personal character definitely feeds into the characters of the book. You know, the Jubal Stone series has been one of my favorite. Uh, I think it's number one because Jubal, he, he had some hard knocks in the beginning of his life. At 14, he lost his whole family. They were gunned down. They were assassinated. His dad was a lawman. And, um, so he watched them be gunned down. He was shot in the, the side of the head himself, and he couldn't speak for two years. They, the, the ones that shot him thought he was dead, but he survived. And then he rose up the ranks of being a lawman, and he has uncanny lawman skills, even at a, a young age. Uh, but he values life. Uh, he, he believes in God. Um, he's a fair man, but he's a hard man. Uh, he's tough. He's tough as nails. So uh, I love his name. Somebody even, uh, I think, put in a review on Amazon recently, or I can't remember where I saw it, but they said, I would have loved to have been named that myself, Jubal. <laughs> and Jubal is interesting. Uh, that name comes from the Bible. And Jubal was the first musician in the Bible. And so I have Jubal Stone playing a flute, a small flute that a hobo gave him uh, one night when they were riding the rails together and that man died in his sleep, but he stuffed the, the uh, small instrument in Jubal's pocket with a note and it said, play, Jubal, play. And Jubal learned to play that flute. Uh, and so, and he often plays it uh, at a funeral. His, you know, there in the... Uh, graveyard he plays for his, his mom and dad and his sister who were killed but other lawmen who have died and um so uh got willie joining us also uh from uh from canada thank you willie it's good to to see you on here and um thanks for joining us but um again um jubal plays that flute often uh, during times when people are sad and uh, it's a lot of emotion uh, to it. And so, uh, again, you'll see him in several of these books 
as he pulls out his flute. Another thing I'm thinking about, Jubal, you know, in the in the West, you see this on television, on the screen, and, uh, you know, often the high binders, the outlaws, you know, they notch the butt of their pistol uh, to... Um, recognized how many people they've killed or gunned down. They were proud of the fact they killed someone. Well, Jubal Stone actually notches his pistol, but it's not for the same reason. He notches his pistol for every fallen lawman he's ever known. And right now he has six. The last one, it's kind of a moving story. I'm kind of giving some of the plot away, but it was a, uh, an honorary kid deputy he had by the name of Billy Sykes, who was uh, killed. Uh, two men had robbed the freight office and Billy being the honorary deputy tried to stop them and they, they trampled him underfoot by their horses and um, Jubal notches his gun at that, that young boy's funeral and he does it in, in, in memory and honor of Billy. So that's kind of a cool thing that uh, Jubal Stone has notches on his pistol and they honor the, the uh, fallen lawmen and that kind of reminds me of today is, uh, you know, we, we really need to honor our, our men in blue and our women in blue. They are on the front line, and we appreciate them uh, so much. And so, again, I um, see uh, Rob uh, joining us. Rob, good to see you, man. Uh, thank you for uh, being such an encourager and a supporter of mine. I know you've read all the Jubal Stone books, and, uh, hey, if you want to post something about any of them, we'd love to see that and so uh, all right and Caitlin says uh, hey Jim I'm glad to be here can't wait to have my book signed so why don't I do that right now and I'm gonna sign Caitlin's because she just popped up and I'm gonna do that right now All right, and so I did that to Caitlin. I hope you enjoy the book, Casey Nash. And by the way, uh, you know, Casey Nash is uh, my pen name. I shared that recently on Facebook, and uh, some may say, well, why do you have a pen name? Well, I don't know. It just adds a little bit of mystery, I guess. It's been kind of cool to do that. I love that name, Casey Nash, so uh, there it is. <laughs> uh, so just a little intrigue, um, and so I will sign some more books here. I have a list of those who uh, bought books. I'm going to sign one to Kathy uh, Lucino. I think, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but Kathy, thank you for purchasing the book. Okay, and so that's to Kathy. Yeah, Wayne says, I'm about to purchase your book. I think any of your books would make a great gift. Uh, through the past book signings, let me see if I can look at this. Um, yeah, he's talking about a lot of people that were involved in church have read these books and God has worked in their lives. Um, Leah uh, says, I have the book already. Maybe we'll get down there to have you sign it in person. Would love to do that, Leah. Would love to see you and uh, Willie soon. Okay, and I'm going to sign Wayne a book. And Wayne, like I said, is a, a dear friend of mine. We've known each other for, I don't know, probably 15 years. And uh, he is he is like a brother to me. Okay, Wayne, I have your book signed. Good deal. And again, anybody that uh, may have a question about my writing or anything you'd like to say, um, I'd love to uh, 
uh, interact with you. Um, I will say about this this book tonight that we're doing, the Thou Shall Not Steal. And, and by the way, this is uh, hopefully the first of a number of these. I'm, uh, I've, I've kind of been called the guinea pig for for dusty saddles, and I'm perfectly good with that. I'm kind of an edgy person in that sense. I love to try things. I'm not afraid to fail, and I have a publisher who's not afraid to uh, try things as well, so I appreciate their their uh, courage and also their uh, support and their trust in me uh, to do this. So, um, but I, w- I will say quickly about this book, Thou Shall Not Seal. It is about uh, two brothers who had a horse stealing ring and they, they really messed up when they stole, stole Jubal Stone's prized red brown and his, and, and the wedding gift he gave to his wife, which was a beautiful done filly. And, uh, but anytime I can write about horses, uh, I do that. I love to put a lot of description about horses. Uh, like I said, I just, I'm a horse lover, uh, you know, from my head to my toes and, uh, and, and so anytime I can include a, a horse in my books, uh, I'm going to do that. So, um, so Caitlin asks, who is your favorite author? You know, I guess this, this is going to sound so cliche, but I guess uh, Louis L'Amour would be up there. Although <clears throat> I have not read uh, too many of Louis L'Amour's books, but the ones I've read, I've enjoyed I've certainly enjoyed the movies that were made from his books. And, uh, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, wow, I hope maybe one day um, they, they'll make some movies out of my books. Um, you know, people have asked me, do you have any aspirations for any of your books to become movies? Well, I've actually had some conversations with producers, especially with my first series, uh, but I'm not hung up on that. Um, but I, but it would be cool if if that happened. And so... Um, okay, and Chip Robertson, Chimp Robertson, glad you're joining us, Chimp. Uh, hope it is the first of a number of these books. Amazing author. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chimp, for that. Thank you for your support. I know uh, you two are an author, and so blessings to you, my friend. From Emily, do you think you might do a spinoff of the Jubal Song series with some of the characters from the series? Let's see. Let me go down here. Uh, from the series and their own story or upbringing, like the homeless man with his flute or Monty's story. You know, spinoffs, Emily, um, you know, those are certainly in play. Uh, I did a uh, spinoff of the Jubal Stone series recently. It's called Forbidden Love, and um, it's a romance story. And um, and, and so, yes, spinoffs are, are... Uh, I think are definitely in play and I'm about to start another, a second romance story that will uh, probably spin off one of the characters in the Jubal Stone series, maybe his deputy Tanner Burns. That's a, that's a great question. Thank you, Emily. Yeah, Monty Peel, I think Emily, you're talking about him and, the homeless man uh, with the flute, uh, that was Frank, and he actually passed away. Uh, but his legacy kind of lives on through Jubal and the flute playing. Thanks, Katrina, for, for watching. Appreciate you uh, joining us as well. I'm going to sign uh, a couple more books here. And uh, this is uh, to a good friend of mine, Kenneth Cropper, who is from Lexington, Kentucky. And again, let me let me say or remind us that um, if you haven't purchased the book, you'd like to purchase it, you can go to www.caseynashauthor.com and there's a link on there and you can just put your information in and you purchase the book and you can you know, you pop up on here and tell me you've done that. I'll sign you a book or even afterwards, after this um, uh 
live feed. If you want to purchase the book, you can do that. Let me also mention, I, I think I've already said that uh, there, there are six books in this series right now currently, and I'm just going to aim the, the phone here. Hopefully I don't do anything crazy. But you see uh, the, the books here, book one, two, three, four, five, six, and these covers, I mean, they they sizzle. I love the red uh, covers. Dusty Saddles did a wonderful job uh, putting those together. And as always, with all my books, you can get them the Kindle download or you can get uh, a hardcover or, or paperback. And those are on uh, Amazon as well. But, but this evening, if you're interested in me uh, uh, signing it and... Uh, Thank you, Emily. She, she posted that uh, uh, my website on there, so you can go to that, www.caseynashauthor.com, and you can follow that link and, and uh, order that book. My power cord. Um, I thought I would read a little bit more from one of the books. Um, let me take this out. My phone's flashing, it needs a little power, so we're gonna give it a little bit of juice here and hopefully not uh, lose anybody in the process, okay? Everything needs to be batteried up, so. Like I said, we are, uh, we are in the learning phase on this, I think it's going great though. I'm enjoying myself. I hope you're uh, enjoying being a part of this. And uh, yeah, that. yeah. Um, Is it just a plug? You can that, you know? Okay, I think we're back. We hopefully we've got some power to it. Okay, I think we're back up and running here, and I want to uh, thank um, my secretary, Lisa. Uh, she is helping me out, and I would be lost. Um, yeah, Nathan, you're right. He says it's not a live stream without some technical difficulties. That is true. Uh, thank you, James uh, Newcomb, for watching. Appreciate you being a part of this as well. And again, uh, you can go to www.caseynash.com if you would like to purchase this book. And also, all my books are on Amazon, this Jubal Stone series, um, and you can get it paperback or uh, digital download. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to sign a, another book or two, and this one, uh, this one will be to Emily Davis. And by the way, as um, we sign these, we'll be mailing them out probably tomorrow. Uh, hello, Nick. Good to see you. Um, always good to see my friend Nick. Um, all right. Good deal. Okay, so if you have any questions, again, about uh, the book or my writing, or maybe even um, I, would, I would be glad to divulge a little information on uh, a couple of books uh, that are coming up and kind of putting those together. And um, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm doing some uh, co-writing with authors and uh, that has uh, really been a neat experience. We feed off of each other well. And um, so, all right, I have another question here from, for Katrina, uh, from Katrina. When did you realize you wanted to be an author? Um, you know, after I graduated from seminary, my doctoral program, I think it gave me a lot of confidence to write. I learned, to, I learned technical writing, which was kind of a discipline. And um, I, I began to, you know, I'd read a lot of articles, Christian Magazine articles, and I kept seeing a guy's name that uh, I went, a, a, new, a guy by the name, by that name from seminary, and I wondered, is this, 
him. And, and it was. And I called him one day and I said, dude, you're showing up in all these magazines. What are you doing? How did you start that? And he told me, man, I just, I started writing. I started submitting and they started printing them. And, and so um, I did the same thing. I, I worked up an article and uh, I sent it in. And I mean, the first one I sent in, they, they published it actually got paid for it. I'm like, wow, you can get paid to write. And so, um, you know, I made it my goal really to have an article in, in at least one Christian magazine a month. And so that's how that started. I wrote for some newspapers. But like I said, 2014, I was, I was reading another book and it was actually, I'm trying to think of the author's name, but the book was called Start. And it was after Katrina and you know how so many people had to start over and he asked the question in the book if you could do anything what would you do if you didn't have any limitations or you know other words what's your dream what's one of your dreams and i thought well i would like to write a book and uh so that gave me you know the idea to do it and then the confidence i started writing and as i mentioned earlier the first one i wrote it was uh uh, Miracle at Collar Spring Ranch. That's a series in itself. There's six books there. And um, that first book I wrote is kind of a contemporary Western, but it's the same family, the Reese family, throughout the, the generations. And they come to Wyoming and settle in Wyoming. And, you know, that kind of opens up a little story I want to share with you quickly. Back in 2014, after the book was published and I had it in hand, I had a box of books and I took a number of them to Wyoming I was working with some church planters out there at the time, and I was driving from Cheyenne uh, to Casper, and I kept seeing the sign Horse Creek. Well, Horse Creek is the, the uh, location or the, the background of, of where my first series is. I just picked that place off a map, and that was kind of cool. So I thought, I've got to go to Horse Creek just to say I've, I've been there. So I drove out, and it was like driving through Yellowstone first, Secondly, I drove about 20 miles before I started seeing anybody. It was kind of uh, scary to me. I was in a rental car and I was just off nowhere. I finally came to a place called Horse Creek. And it was a post office drop and a little firehouse. And I'm like, you're kidding me. Well, just down the road, there was a ranch house. And I pulled in, I started talking to the, the foreman there, who now is a very good friend of mine. We work cattle in Wyoming together uh, almost every every summer. And uh, I stopped and I told him, I said, you know, I'm, I told him who I was. I said, you know, I've written a book. The setting is Horse Creek, Wyoming. Um, the the owner of the ranch was not there. His name is Dave. And and so I said, Would you, I'm going to leave this book. Would you just give it to him? He said, sure. And he gave it to him. And Dave called me about four days later after I got home. and And he just told me what it meant for him to read my book and the things that, that was in it. And, and he said, uh, I'm sorry I missed you, but the next time you come out, I want to show you my beautiful ranch. Well, I've been going out there for the last seven years now, six or seven years. Uh, and again, I mentioned him earlier. Um, I appreciate his uh, generosity, but he is such a conservator of the ranch he has. He loves uh, that that land and uh, he knows the history of it. In fact, some of my books, just again, ideas, I, I wrote a book called Winchester Fever. And that idea came from his ranch. We were riding along across his vast uh, land and he said, that's Powell Mountain. And I said, oh, Powell Mountain, okay. And he said, that's where Tom Horn killed Fred Powell. And I'm like, what, you know? And so I jotted that down and a couple of days later, I went up on Powell Mountain and I sat there for probably three to four hours. And I was looking over a small little, what was left of a little homestead, probably was Fred Powell's, I'm not sure. Fred Powell was a, a cattle thief and he was warned to leave the area and he didn't and all that kind of stuff. But so, uh, you know, I sat there against a ponderosa pine and I mean, the wind was howling and uh, it was a little bit cold, even though it was, I think, June. And that's where I got the idea for that book and came home and, and uh, wrote that. So, uh, again, just going out west is uh, it just gives me so much fodder for my writing. Okay, I'm going to sign another book here. And this is going to be to Nathan. <clears throat>
Okay. Again, just want to remind you that you can go uh, to my website as www.caseynash.com and you can order this book. And uh, of course, again, on Amazon, you can order any of the uh, six in the series by uh, paperback or um, a download, a digital download. And, you know, um, going back to, uh, I think Wayne mentioned this about gifts. Um, Christmas is not too far away. Uh, some people may not want to hear that, but it's not. It's just a few months. And these make excellent, excellent gifts. Uh, a lot of times I hear, hey, my dad's a Western fanatic. My grandfather's a Western fanatic. have a lot of uh, female readers, and I appreciate them as well. But uh, the whole set uh, you could get uh, as, a, as a gift. And, uh, again, that 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 that. You know, you don't have to go out and shop. You can just go to Amazon. They will arrive at your door, and also it supports authors. You know, I would say also just on behalf of the authors out there, you know, uh, the first book in this Jubal Stone series, uh, uh, Blood Trail to Hell, It's it's uh, uh, that's the first one. And I looked today, this was a little bit odd because... Uh, I had 666 ratings, 666. It kind of made me a little nervous. And so I'm hoping it's going to be 667 when I look at it again. But, uh, and, and, and I want you to know I'm not, I'm not bragging about the ratings, uh, but that's, I think, out of 660-something ratings, uh, it's about a 4.5-star rating. And I don't know what, what you think about that, I like it. I appreciate it. I'm humbled by it, and that that many people would actually rate the book. And then there's some great reviews. And then I looked at uh, the ones behind it, and a couple of them have 500 ratings. So, um, you know, uh, uh, I'm, again, I'm just very excited about writing, and I, I've not gotten over the excitement of people wanting to read what I write. And uh, again, they're clean books, um, and and you know you can your your children can read them. Um, you know your your kids that love uh, if they're into horses and uh, cattle and all that, they're they're probably gonna uh, enjoy these books. Some kids have done book reviews on some of my books. I've heard that. And I appreciate that uh, so much. Again, I want to just a shout out to Dusty Saddle Publishing. Uh, they have been such a blessing uh, to me and um, uh, allowed me to get my book out there. My uh, uh, amazing publicist, uh, Nick Whale, I appreciate him so much. He's more than a publicist, he's a friend of mine. I appreciate what he's done for me, uh, but they are professionals, they're experts in what they do. And uh, I know that I would not be uh, this far along in my writing if um, if it wasn't for them. So uh, thanks, Dusty Saddles, again, for entrusting me with this virtual book signing. Um, so, uh, Grady Bryant, thank you for watching. Grady's another author, and uh, uh, he's, he's uh, putting out some good books, and uh, thank you, Grady, for uh, joining. And I know that uh, a number of authors with Dusty Saddles will be doing some uh, virtual book signings. And so hopefully we'll kind of get the bugs worked out um, uh, for them to come along. Uh, but it's a great way. Uh, another thing I like about Dusty Saddles, and, you know, they didn't tell me to say any of this. In fact, I asked permission to even give them a shout out. But uh, they are very innovative and uh, not afraid to try things. And I love the fact that as an author, I have a lot of uh, interaction in my writings, you know, whether it's the covers or the, the, especially the content. If I have an idea about a book or, or uh, whatever, I can shoot that to my publicist and he will chew on it and we'll have a conversation about it. And it's, it's not odd that I'm, you know, I'm off and running with whatever we've decided on. And uh, uh, again, I, I appreciate that so much. And 
I love the fact that they can uh, they can get a book of mine out so quick. If I turn it in, it goes through editing and it can go live uh, within days. In fact, um, and Nick, you'd have to remind me of this. You told me today, but book seven is going live in September. I think maybe the, well, what is it today? The 13th. So uh, a few days from now, I can't remember the date, but uh, just submitted that a few days ago for editing. They've done the editing and now it will go live shortly. Um, and, you know, that's another thing that's uh, blown me away that uh, the last few books we've done on pre-order before they went live, we did a pre-order and all of them have been in the top 100. Uh, some of them down into the 30s at times. That's just blown me away. Thanks, Nick. It is September 16th. Three days from now, you can get book seven. So I hope you'll do that and then be looking for book eight because it's coming quickly. Uh, again, yeah, I do write in my sleep. Uh, I'm always thinking about ideas and uh, things about a book or, you know, uh, you know, some people say, where do you get your ideas? I mean, I literally get them from, from everything and everyone, whatever I'm doing, I'm just kind of, I've got my ears open. Kind of the same way with my sermons, you know, the messages I preach. Uh, I like to be very relevant and speak to where people are. And so, you know, I've opened my eyes, opened my ears, and uh, uh, the, the Lord really uh, gives me some, some neat ideas. So thanks, Leah. You'll be looking for uh, book seven and eight. And again, they'll be out very soon. And then uh, I've started working on book nine. And uh, so constantly doing that. And, uh, you know, some people have said, do you ever get writer's block? Um, I've not experienced that yet. Um, I think my life has just been so colorful. I, I, it reminds me of my dad. I said about my dad, he lived the equivalent of three lives. I kind of feel like I'm like that. I've, I've just had a taste of so much. And uh, so I've got a kind of a deep reservoir to write from. And so I've not run into, you know, uh, some days are better than other days. Some days I just can't wait to get to my laptop and I start clicking away. And uh, other days... I kind of struggle a little bit. I think, you know, okay, I'm going to go this way. Then I back up and I go this way. But uh, it just seems like there's always something there. And, you know, to any uh, uh, aspiring authors out there, like I said, I don't, I don't consider myself to have arrived in any way. Uh, but I will um, say this, that writing is a discipline. It's like a lot of things. If you want to be good at something, you do it and you do it some more. Louis L'Amour said that if you want to be a good writer, write, 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 write. And it's interesting at some of the book signings I've been at, I've, I've had several people say, I've always wanted to write a book. And I asked the question, why haven't you? And you know, most of them is just getting started. It's getting started. I had a lady a couple of years ago at the Dixie National Rodeo, I had a book signing there and she and her husband had adopted a child from another country, and it was quite a journey. And she said, you know, I've always wanted to write that story, put it down, you know, uh, uh, write a book. And I said, why haven't you done it? I just, I don't know, I hadn't started. So I said, you need to start. Well, recently I got a copy of that book from her, and in the front of the book, uh, I was so honored, but she said, I met Jim Burnett at Dixie National, and we started talking about his writing, he encouraged me to start, and then I had the finished product in my hand. So that was cool. So I want to encourage you, if you're an aspiring writer, just start writing. You may think it's silly. You may wonder, well, anybody, you know, uh, what are people going to think about this or whatever? But that's just fear. You know, just set that aside and go. Just try it. Antonio, thank you for joining us. Not sure where you're joining us from, uh, but those uh, that are, are being a part of this, just let us know where you're from. It's kind of cool to think we have this neat technology that, uh, you know, Great Britain and Canada and Chicago and, you know, all parts of the of the world. So, um, okay, thank you, Leah. It's good to, good to see you, good to talk with you, uh, and uh, I'll be talking to you soon. Yeah, send some pics of those horse, that horse you have. I'll, I'll look forward to seeing that. Okay, I'm going to sign another book. And again, plenty of time for you to, to purchase one from my website, or you can do it uh, as we uh, go off the air here in, in just a little bit. 
but it's not too late. The, the, um, my publisher said they'd keep the store open so that you can do that. All right, this is to Brandon. Okay, so we're good on time. We're not going to rush it. Um, but if you, again, if you have any uh, comments or thoughts, um, thank you, for Katrina, for joining us. Um, it's so nice to be a part of this and your adventure. Thank you for having me, and take care. And you take care, too, Katrina. We'll be talking to you uh, very soon. Again, there's uh, six books in the Jubilstone series currently. Seven and eight are coming. Nine is on the horizon. Uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, and on it goes. And, uh, you know, I think uh, Jubilstone has a lot of life to him, a lot of room to run. And, um, uh, again, just thinking of new adventures uh, for him as a Texas lawman on the frontier. You know, that's another thing as an author that we get to do. We get to kind of live in that uh, that era. I, I think sometimes like a, probably a lot of cowboys and people that love the West, sort of like, uh, man, I was, I was born in the wrong era. And I think sometimes that's nostalgia. When I go out West, um, like I said, I can, I can sit on the side of a mountain for half a day and not get bored. And I'm just, you know, the wheels are turning. And a lot of times I'm, I'm talking to the Lord, I'm praying, but I'm just thinking about life and then... Uh, thinking about maybe what I will write and, uh, and you know, I look around the landscape, you see a, a, a herd of antelope come by or a train with 300 cars on it across that beautiful uh, western landscape. And uh, I don't know, it just does something. It just makes my heart kind of flutter because uh, I know people wonder sometimes, what do you do out there? Well, some people would probably be bored with what I do because I don't have an agenda. I just go and I'm just there and I'm just a part of, of what's going on. So uh, if you're a writer, you understand that. And um, another thing I would say to aspiring writers or you know those uh, out there that are thinking about writing is, uh, again, just, just do it. But for me, one of the things that feeds my writing is traveling and, and changing locations. Because you can kind of get stale or dull if you just stay in one spot mentally, but sort of changing the landscape sometimes, that really does it for me. Uh, so try that. You know, again, I've, I've heard of people having writer's block, uh, but try to change locations. Do something uh, a little bit different. All right, I'm going to sign another book. This is going to be to Jackie Paxton. And Jackie, thank you for purchasing uh, my book, and I hope you'll enjoy it. All right, and I'll go ahead and sign another one. This is uh, to Trina. Trina, thank you for your support and your encouragement.
And, and let me also say about these books um, is that, you know, they're, they're sort of standalone books in a way, and, but yet they make a lot more sense when you read them together as a series. So, you know, if you start off with this series, it'll, it'll make sense, and I think you'll enjoy the book. But I would encourage you to back up and uh, get the others. It'll all kind of come together as a, uh, as a puzzle. Uh, this is uh, from Lisa. It says, do you have a favorite character or one that speaks to you more or a character whose storyline evolved in a way you weren't expecting? Well, that's a great question. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say this. There's times when I'm writing and I get so emotional. I, I will get into that character. I, I become that character, I guess you would say. And, again, I'm writing from... Uh, you know, the grief of losing my mom and dad in the last couple of years is still very fresh to me, losing my father-in-law. So when I come to those emotional parts, uh, I can climb into the boots of that character. And, man, sometimes I'm just weeping, and I think, man, if somebody walks in, they're going to think I'm crazy. You know, they're going to take me to the nut house or whatever. And yet, I'm grateful that I, I'm able to do that because... I think if that's happening to me, it's going to happen to those reading it. And I know that to be true because I've heard a lot of people say, man, I felt like I was right there with Jubal Stone when that happened. I was, I was right there riding alongside of him. And I think that's the, the dream of an author is we want to put you where that character is and make you feel or help you feel what they're feeling. And sometimes it's not good feelings. Maybe it'd be it may be anger. It may be some injustice that happened, and you you know you 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 feel your teeth clenching together and your blood pressure rising, and you can probably think of something in your own life that happened to you, and so you climb into that story, or it may be something very funny. You know, my dad was such a character, and there were so many uh, anecdotal things he said to us growing up, and didn't appreciate them then. What What's kind of been neat in my writing is my dad had a lot of idioms that he would say, and I didn't have a clue what they meant. But when I started Western writing and started doing research and would look at these terms, these phrases, and go back to the original, and I'm like, now I know what he was talking about. And that was, that was kind of cool. I mean, it's kind of silly as some, but my dad would often say, you know, if you said, how you doing, dad? Fine as a frog hair split four ways. Well, I haven't heard that many people say that. Yet, oddly, this morning I was talking to someone. I'm trying to remember who it was. And they said, I said, how you doing? And they said, fine as a frog hair. And I said, man, that reminds me of my dad. Uh, and and uh, so, uh, you know, again, as I'm, uh, as I'm writing into these characters, uh, their experience becomes my experience. And I find myself sometimes just laughing my head off. There's other times I'm just, I'm really just weeping. And I'm like, man, I got to get a hold of myself or I need to move past this part, you know. Uh, so, but I love that. I love that writing can stir you. Uh, and, you know, if I ever lose that, I think I'm through writing. If I can't feel what that character is feeling. And, you know, I like to keep it real. This is kind of a funny little story I'll share with you, but one of my books uh, a couple of years ago I wrote, and, and um, it was some of my first books, and my wife would read them, and she's my greatest critic in a, in a loving way, but she's very honest with me. And she read the book, and she said, you know, I really like the book, but it was all too perfect. This family, everything that happened, uh, you know, went their way. And I got to thinking about it, and I thought, oh, my goodness, she's right. So you know what I did? I went back in there, and I messed them up really good. I messed that family. I mean, they had lots of problems, kind of like all of our families do, right? And uh, they, uh, so, you know, eating disorders and maybe one of them was a thief or whatever, but uh, things that we all deal with in our family. So uh, that was a lesson to me. Uh, Doug Willis, appreciate you watching. Uh, Daryl Roberts, good friend of mine, uh, thank you for watching. I haven't talked with you and several years, but it's uh, good, to, good to have you on here uh, this evening. And so, anyway, the characters uh, in my books, uh, they, they just, they're from all walks of life, and they just come from the people I've known, uh, and so it just never uh, gets dull. All right, I'm going to sign 
another copy. Thank you, Matt Wells, for watching. appreciate you uh, joining us. And again, if you have any questions or thoughts, if you've read any of the Jubilstone books in this series, love to hear from you. And like all authors, uh, you know, we love Amazon reviews, good Amazon reviews, but kind of like testimonies. It, if you like the book, somebody else is probably going to like it. And if you put that on Amazon and they read it, uh, then it's going to encourage them probably uh, to purchase that. Okay, so um, I think we're going to kind of uh, wrap this up. I've signed the books that people have purchased. And uh, again, just a reminder, if you want to buy the book, uh, this is Thou Shall Not Steal. It's uh, the, um, let's see, I think it's the fifth, fifth book in the series. And uh, you can go to my website, www.caseynashauthor.com. And uh, of course, after today, uh, you can always get the Jubilstone uh, series on Amazon. You can get it in paperback, or you can also uh, get it digital download. And again, great Christmas gifts. You can order them, the whole set, put them in a bag, give them to someone, you're done uh, with your shopping. So again, I want to thank everyone who has been a part of this virtual book signing. Uh, I've had a blast just being here. I know I've just talked a lot, but I, I hope that you've enjoyed uh, being a part of this as well. And um, uh, get your copies of the book and look for new ones uh, that are coming. And you'll see uh, the website there pops up. You can check that out. Uh, Jackie, thank you for being a part, and I appreciate you. And I'm going to sign off now. And again, uh, just thank you for everyone who supported me tonight, but also for all of those who've purchased my books in the last few months. And uh, just thank you in advance for the books that you will purchase. And again, I appreciate your time tonight. You know, the greatest thing we all have is time and you, you gave me your time tonight and I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And I will sign off.